Okay, so let's talk about um, Fe3+, plus, which is has six water ligands. And that is the complex ion in FeCl3, whereas we might refer to FeCl3 in uh, first semester general chemistry uh, a simple, to, to be a simple way of referring to it. Uh, the Fe3 uh, plus does have color. It does have six water ligands attached. And so we might also refer to this as uh, FeH2O. Six Cl3. That would be another way of, uh, or a more detailed way of referring to it. And we would expect that this would have a color, and it does. Now, the Fe, the uh, iron three ion, does have an octahedral geometry. We know that it has an octahedral geometry because it has six ligands, and six ligands means it is octahedral. And uh, on that previous slide, we can see that the only choice for six ligands is octahedral. And we even have an example there. Uh, it's a different example, but it does have the six ligands right there. Okay. Now we know this is Fe3 plus because water is a neutral ligand. So it doesn't change the bond, the, the charge, and therefore it has to be three plus with Fe three plus. And we can uh, think about this. If we do electron configurations, we can do the electron configuration of the iron atom. Iron has 26 electrons. It would have argon, 4s2, 3d6 as its electron configuration for the atom. Then when we take three electrons away, we're going to take two of them from the 4s2 and one of them from the 3d5, so Fe3 plus ion would have 3d5. <clears throat> and uh, the, the, the d electrons are the complicated ones now. It turns out for this one that uh, all of the 3ds, one, two, three, four, five, would have one electron in them. So all of the three Ds are taken, meaning that you cannot bond the ligands. And, and just to be clear, these are the electrons of just the ion before the ligands come in. So uh, now we are going, and so uh, to bring in each of these H2O molecules, Each of those H2O molecules is going to have a pair of electrons donated by the oxygen in the H2O uh, to be a monodentate ligand. And our picture of this, uh, therefore, would be at the Fe3+. And we've got our six positions for octahedral. They are the same six positions from Gen Chem 1, and the, each of these bond angles is 90 degrees. And in each of these, we would have an O, and uh, I'm just gonna not draw all the bonds. I'm just gonna write it like this. To show that it is the oxygen that is covalently bonded to the Fe3+. Plus. Each of these bonds has the two electrons from the oxygen, and that is how we would draw the uh, electron geometry and the molecular geometry, although I always focus on the electron geometry. Both are the same in this case. Um, now to get back to the orbitals, so after 3D5, and for this one, the 3D is lower in energy than the 4S, that's why it has electrons in it. So the next orbitals are going to be uh, 4s, then 4t, then 4d, and that's how you're going to get sp3d2 hybridization. And this is different than the last case. Remember, in this case, we've got all five of these 
3D orbital with at least one electron in it, and therefore um, we have to go to the next orbital to choose the orbitals in which there is hybridization uh, for the ligands. That's in, uh, different than the previous case where we had uh, the platinum in which there were four orbitals that were full and one that was empty. And so we're starting to see that the D orbitals and their splitting and how you distribute the electrons are really at what's at the heart of crystal field theory, which we're sort of slowly getting through, and that there can be differences. There can be times when the electrons pair and leave other orbitals open, which is something new. And then there can be cases where they don't pair, and that's something that we're more familiar with.